Oh my god, you're all here. Give me a second. Nearly missed my own uh, YouTube channel. So hi everyone, how are you? Welcome back to the channel, Shibumi Boat Build. Unfortunately, we're not out in the boat. It's too cold, too wet, and there's no heating in the boat. I'm having major problems trying to get any major progress done. Yet again, as of tonight, I think we are the looking down at the calendar, 22nd of February, and a huge weather front is coming in again over Ireland and going to drop 80 millimeters of rain on us. So what's happened in the last week? Basically, I managed to get the exhaust outlet at the transom marked up you'll see a little video of that shortly and also i finished the last of the painting internally uh the hand painting we'll call it not the epoxy painting there's a couple of coats of that to go in there which has been too cold to do and the same on the underside of the lids the other thing i had to do was because i welded so much welding at the same time my mistake on all the little nuts 20 mil nuts or 20 10 mil nuts all the way around the port, the little hatches on the tanks. The, as the plates cooled, they did distort a little bit and I started them out with a bottle of gas and uh, managed to reheat them and get them all to lie down flat again. So that's all done. Uh, the other thing I did do, and I'll show you all this later in the video, is I fully designed and very happy with a very, very intricate fuel system for the whole boat to handle all the diesel. From moving fuel, drawing different fuel fuel from different tanks to different appliances and also the ability to clean the fuel while underway so we'll keep an eye on that so let's watch and see what happens First of the <coughs> no rust primer in grey. Hand painting this on and rolling it. It's quite uh, tacky to be honest. I need to thin it out a little bit more because it's been so cold. So just these sections here to do. Coat number two now finally on <coughs> the tank inners are starting to really come together. They're going to get one more and then about three coats of epoxy, which will probably be about three millimeters of paint on it, or maybe two, which is going to be quite a lot of paint. Cool tunes on the radio. So this is the first top that I've actually taken the, the parts off the lids and drilled them out. But if you've noticed there, and I'm just going to give a little wiggle with my foot, it's quite badly distorted because of the heat that was generated in the centre when I welded all the studs. Now this one, which I haven't taken the lids off yet, didn't have the same temperature, so it's actually less. But in order to try and sort this, I have it on two aluminium profiles that are 50 mil high running along the floor. I have a gas bottle and a torch here. I have already had a go at this and I took it from where it was really bad to this. So I'm going to heat it now and hopefully it'll all just sit down and relax into itself. So we'll see how we get on. So excuse the noise, currently we're looking at the gap there. That's already come down nearly 20 millimeters. We're at this a short time. Because I'm de-stressing the steel. So this is about five minutes later, maybe 10, I could be somewhere in between. But as you can see now, it's completely lying flat. There's no kink in the center of it. It's not hopped up. If anything, it's dipped down, which will be fine because the minute it sits on those uh, plates in the boat, it'll pop back level again. So uh, the whole sheet now can cool down and uh, 
it's, it's totally de-stressed now. So that walked a treat. It's just been constant rain here the last oh, nearly a week now. Just rain and storms and high winds. It's kind of calmed down a little bit today. But as you can see there, some of our windows have taken and the front ones have already gone. Uh, what was wrong was the plastic that we were using is not UV protective. And I have uh, a sheet of plastic coming. It's what they use in these uh, greenhouse polytunnels. So it's UV protect. They say 10 years. I want one or two. So uh, soon we'll get to change those windows. As you can see, puddles after just a recent shower. And you can hear the wind is blowing quite strong. I'm on the smaller camera now, currently. So here I have, uh, let's just steady myself here. So here I have marked the hole where I'm intending to put the exhaust. Uh, it's only just marked for now, and it's a six inch hole. It'll be pierced with a drill and then plasma cut on the inside. So I literally had to take a line off the water line of the design of the boat uh, to get it. Uh, the right height and everything so I have my 50 mil above so that's been sitting there with a few days I have a sheet of timber on the inside to stop any sparks going near the fuel tanks inside and the last thing I'm trying to do is finish just the last bit of coating on the inside of the floor tanks then I can put the tops on but I need a certain amount of temperature to do the epoxy painting and I just can't get it so just one little sad thing there last Thursday uh, our dog of years uh, passed away, Scooby the Orange Labrador, he featured in several videos, could always be seen in the background walking around and I just want to acknowledge this because Dara made this absolutely hand engraved it and then finished it, you can see the lovely lacquer on it and he made this uh, sign for his, uh, in his little spot in the garden we'll call it. So I just wanted to show that, I'm absolutely blown away by it. So just to update on things that are on the way to happen, and that is I have finally managed to source just a small amount of what they call polytunnel. It's those domed uh, greenhouse, I'm trying to do larks here, those little domed uh, greenhouses that are UV resist plastic, which is what we didn't use initially on the original temporary windows of the boat. So that'll give us a couple of years before the sun eats through them and the other ones have gone brittle. You've already seen a shot of that. And the other thing is I've managed to find a plumber because I don't have gun barrel treading equipment. I've managed to find a plumber who next week when he gets back from a job will make me the little tiny nipples and the little uh, draw pipes for all the tanks that are going to be welded in so I'm going to have all those as well next week so hopefully we'll have that done so what I did do is I spent a couple of days uh, in the last week uh, researching all the different ways to handle fuel on a boat as big as Shibumi now Shibumi isn't a big boat it's not even a complicated boat one engine one gearbox one gearbox of course that's on the back of the engine one generator and also the possibility to run one or two diesel heaters be it air or a water heater or both so we don't know what we're going to have so let me just switch to CAD and click into the drawing. So this is what I've ended up with. Uh, you can see the, the at the top here, I've got the engine, the key generator, and the heater or both or whatever I'm going to use. I've also got the port tank, 860 liters. You're just looking at the end of it. And this is more or less to scale. And the uh, starboard tank. And then we have the aft tank, which and the capacities of those are in them. So. As you can see, this is quite a bit of piping. It looks like the London tube map. It was actually described to me today. So let me zoom in. So in each of the tanks, let me just zoom in on just say, the port tank. So we have a fill and a vent on each side. So that's on that one side of the boat and also on the other. The beauty of this is that Shibumi can be fueled from either side. There will actually be uh, an inlet uh, deck a uh, filling point on both sides and also each of the tanks are individually vented so uh, you've also got an aft vent here so the two of those will be beside each other hidden away and this one will be on the other side so I hope you can just see the little mouse moving around so the main point of all of this is to be able to move fuel so 
as the fuel sits in both the port and starboard tanks essentially those tanks should be balanced and they will be in general terms but there could be situations where i need to separate them say i take on horrible fuel or have a problem or i want to clean one tank into the other or whatever and we'll always consider the aft tank as being like a, a wholesale storage area even though it does have the ability to be used as a tank in its own right so in order to facilitate all of that i have a draw pipe which is going to be a standing pipe in each of the tanks there's one here and i call them usage drain of each of the tanks there's the third one there they all go to a manifold and each of those manifolds then are connected to the three out appliances we'll call them so either the main engine generator or the heating as you can see here there's a return pipe then out of the generator engine and there'll be a return pipe of fuel out of the main engine and they will go to what's called a return manifold and then i can decide where i want those returns to go they can go to the port i've marked it red and green for port and starboard and i've also uh, marked the blue one as the aft one so essentially uh, anything to say this is the return out of the engine which is the purple line here I can then switch that and send it into this tank which could be balanced to the far side or I could direct it uh, down directly down into the aft return uh, nozzle which will all happen so to balance the two tanks each tank will have a side gauge the same down here and this one with valves top and bottom so that if the boat is listing or anything like that we're not going to have fuel spillages they'll only be turned on when i need to see the side glass and then turned off straight away uh, each tank will have an output so each of the tanks have i won't go from left to right and up and down now anymore we're just wasting your time so the ability to be able to balance the two tanks then will be a case of opening a series of valves one here and one here and the reason for that you'll see is becomes apparent because it means that i can then stop the balance between the two tanks or divert one tank or the other down into the the, the aft tank and fill that that's the only way this tank can be filled is through the balance pipe there is no um deck inlet for the aft tank it's purely it'll drain off these and then we'll just keep taking on fuel to we're full the whole way with both so the other ability is so basically then with that system i can tell the supply manifold to draw off any of the three tanks or the combined left and right tank we call it send the fuel to the three different appliances and then send the returns to whichever tank they're connected to in logical terms so that's all well and good but in order to move fuel from any tank i need to have a pump system and while I'm doing the pump system, I'm also going to put in a polishing system. And that means that essentially while I'm running off one tank or both, I could polish the fuel from the aft tank, all of those 1,461 litres, whilst underway and just using 20 litres an hour out of the two of these tanks. So the reason, uh, the way I can do that is that I've got a separate way of getting fuel out of each of the tanks and that's by using the balance pipe on both of the two side tanks and also a low mounted hole right down at the very end from the sump uh, of the tank for the aft system so the beauty of this is that i then have a polish or transfer fuel manifold inlet and i have an outlet up here so the idea of it is is that say i'm taking fuel this system is nothing to do with the engine where the engine is taking it i can turn on one tank both tanks or just the aft tank uh, switch on the valve there and then open this and then i go through a set of filters which is going to polish the fuel separate any water any gunge any whatever i need to deal with uh, another va there's valves everywhere here so that the whole system can be taken apart maintained and put back together again without major leakage and problems then into a, a 24 volt uh, pump pumping 25 liters per minute the reason why that's so slow i could go with a higher pressure pump is that the filters need to be able to handle 25 liters per minute so uh, i need big filters 
to be able to get that amount of fuel through. So realistically, it won't be pulling that. It'll it'll have a quite a vacuum going the whole time, um, sucking the diesel through those. Uh, there's we'll come back to this as a pressure switch. So then the beauty of this then is is that as it draws from whatever tank I choose, then I can send that fuel to whatever tank I I choose. So it doesn't always have to go back to the one I want it came from. I can take fuel from the aft tank, clean it, and then send it to the port or starboard or the combination of both if the balance pipes are open. Um, so I can basically move fuel from this tank to this tank, this tank to this tank, this tank to this tank. I can move fuel any way I want. The other thing I've incorporated into the whole system is a bleed system. And because we'll have pressure here, and that's where this pressure switch will come in now in a second, you'll see that. I can open this system and I can bleed by putting pressurized diesel, which is coming from the sump of any tanks or any tanks that have fuel in them, I'd be guaranteed to have a constant flow of fuel and pressurize the input feeds back to the tank and blow the bubbles out of that. So say if there was air in this hose here, once I put the pressure on, it'll blow fuel all the way back down this line and the bubbles will be heard coming out of the tank and it'll fill that tank so it's solid diesel. Turn off that, then say turn on the engine and then send pressurized diesel all the way to the filter. So I've say I've changed the filters or need to change the main filter on the engine. Then I can open the bleed screw and it'll leave out the air. So because I don't want to cause too much of a back pressure system with the pump, I'm incorporating a three way a three psi pressure switch on this pump that can be switched independently to operate with the pump. So if I'm in bleed mode, we'll call it. I can switch it in so that once the pump reaches three psi, it'll kick out and it'll keep kicking in and out as the pressure comes and goes. So that way I'm guaranteed to have pressure all the way up to the engine, the generator, or whichever line I want to fill uh, with air or to, with fuel, remove the air, and I'm guaranteed to fuel right to the top of the filter and then I'm guaranteed never a problem. So the beauty of this is that the same bleed system, the transfer system and polishing system can literally fill all the main fuel lines on their own without ever having to put uh, any way of get, removing the air out of it. So that's quite uh, an intricate little design. I'm very happy with it. It's bomb proof from what I can see. If anyone sees a problem with it, please tell me in the comments. But it's, it's, it's sourced from quite a number. I've done a lot of research on this in working out what uh, the best way to do this, what other people have been doing on long range boats and the best way to look at the point of having a lot of diesel on board and being able to maintain it at the same time. Because if I'm on a long passage, I do need to keep the fuel clean. I do need to know that I've got very good supply of fuel and that everything is going to stay working for me. So that's basically it, folks. That's where we're at with the fuel. I know exactly where I'm going to get all those parts from. So the other, I'll just switch back to me on the little camera here. And there I am. So uh, the other thing, I have a little list down here of other little things. So I mentioned the new windows. Uh, we have the uh, fuel system is designed. The other thing I'm working on, and I have started to source, I've had to start shifting from places that I was going to buy stuff in the UK, where Brexit is now an issue. Uh, to Europe and different places, so I am having to source things in different countries. Um, but the hydraulic fuels, the hydraulic system, getting the three pipes down for each of the thrusters and getting two pipes for the capstan at the front, and starting to plan out what type of piping I'm going to use. It's going to be all stainless. It's going to be all 12 mil for the main stuff and, and six mil for the mast or the radar arch. And the Bimini roof, when that comes, you'll see all that in years to come, or in time to come. And uh, so for now, that's really all I have, guys. I'm hoping that the weather will improve, that I can actually get some work done this week once this weather storm passes. So for now, folks, thanks so much. I'm glad to see we're getting very close to 500 subscribers. Hopefully we'll double that in the next few months and get to the magic thousand. And uh, hopefully the channel will grow as the boat grows. So, folks, thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. 
and also keep an eye on the Facebook and Instagram social media feeds that we're currently running as well. So folks, thank you very much. We'll see you again.